Urban sky photography is becoming very popular and practical for a wider range of people around the world because of new generation of cameras, digital cameras with higher sensitivity, essential for low light environments. Some photographers use their camera on a fixed tripod for short exposures of night sky. Some others who are aiming for faint objects in the sky use tracking mounts. Those mounts could be from large equatorial mounts designed for large telescopes to smallest portable star trackers like Polari by Wixen, which is as an accessory for a DSLR camera and could be used and taken by a photographer to anywhere during a trip. Polari complete package comes with a tripod which includes a special design elevator with hand grip to make polar alignment and balancing better. Polari tripod is fairly fine for a camera with a wide angle lens but it's a lightweight tripod made for travelers with ultimate portability. If you consider using heavier lenses or cameras, try a steadier photo tripod and larger ball heads, of course. Polari can be used on any standard photo tripod using two heads instead of the single usual head on tripod. The tracker body comes between the two heads. The first one helps you to tilt Polari to adjust latitude. This head is not necessary to be ball head. The second one holds the camera and comes on the rotating mount of the tracker. This needs to be a ball head so you can point the camera to any direction and level the horizon in your view. Polari's standard tripod comes with two ball heads so it's all ready to go. The main purpose of Polari is to enable you to do longer exposure photos of the sky with a spectacular starry sky without recording the star traits or the motion of the sky. But in order to use any star tracker mount, we need to first align the tracker rotation axis with the earth rotation axis, simply by pointing the tracker toward the celestial pole. You can start this by opening the embedded compass on the back side of Polari to find the north or south if you're in the southern hemisphere. Continue with leveling the tripod, rotating Polari to north and tilting it to a degree that the latitude marker on the side of Polari matches with your location latitude. Your latitude tells how high is the celestial pole in the sky above you. For example, if you're near the equator, the pole is near the horizon and in the polar regions, it's overhead in the sky. When you turn on the tracker, the latitude marker is dimly illuminated so you can read it at darkness. The celestial pole in the northern hemisphere is marked by famous star Polaris. Look through the polar finding hole in Polari body and move the tracker until the polar star appears in the hole which has about 9 degrees field of view. It's better to point it in the middle of the hole for better accuracy this makes alignment one step further and it's accurate enough for quick wide-angle shots. If you attach an empty tube, like a pen tube, to the hole, the longer distance of your eye from the polar hole makes a smaller field of view and therefore a bit more accurate aligning. But for ultimate aligning, the polar finder optional accessory is needed, which will be explained later in this video. When you do a star escape imaging with only a camera on a tripod, a fixed tripod, 
and using a wide-angle lens you're usually limited to 15 to 30 seconds of exposure to make the stars still pinpoint and not trailed. Longer exposures shows the rotation of the Earth, in fact the rotation of the sky as we see it from the ground. Uh, to stop this we use the Polari or similar tracking mounts and uh, there are several options for this on Polari tracker. One option is just this star mode, which is the sidereal tracking mode. It's the equal speed of the rotation of the Earth, and that, therefore it just fix the stars in your point of view, of course, after you have polar line uh, the tracker. You have another speed, which is only half the speed of uh, sky in motion. So, this doesn't follow the stars in the same speed of the rotation of the Earth. So what is the use of this? This is the secret mode for landscape astrophotographers or starscape imagers. For example, when you're using your wide-angle lens, your limit of exposure because of trailing the stars is 20 seconds. But when you're using this mode of sidereal tracking, you can go for as long as your accuracy of polar alignment allows and also your limit of exposure on digital cameras. So um, we can go for example 40-50 seconds but then you realize your landscape is completely blurred because of motion of the tracking mount. If I put it at the half sidereal mode then I can do instead of 20 seconds 30 seconds and stars are much more, sky is more spectacular and at the same time the landscape is not that much blurred to realize. Both the moon and the sun move across the sky at a bit different speed than the stars. Therefore there are also other tracking modes on Polari. The sun icon on the dial mode is best for images of the sun when you need to track it for a long time. Such as in a solar eclipse, Polar is an ideal compact device for eclipse chasers who are always limited with equipment size on travels around the world to photograph solar eclipses. The moon icon is useful to keep the moon at the center of the image during a lunar eclipse for example. The eclipse complete phases take several hours. For short minute long exposures, the difference between sidereal, solar or lunar modes is not really noticeable. So the most commonly used modes of Polari is the star icon for general wide field photography of the sky or half a speed for landscape astrophotography. Thank you.